While everyone is looking at El Salvador and the fact that they just made Bitcoin legal tender, over here in the good old United States of America, they're doing the old bait and switch while everyone's not looking. Operation making Bitcoin illegal. All right, so this is kind of interesting. And a lot has been happening with Bitcoin over the last couple of weeks. A lot of hopefuls were hoping that maybe Bitcoin could be legal tender in the United States because the IRS taxes it at a high rate, but will not consider it legal tender because the government in the United States controls the monetary system through the Fed, which is a non-government, the Fed, right? So the reality is a lot has changed with Bitcoin. You've seen El Salvador make these new laws and a lot of people are saying, well, is the United States next? Well, on one side, you've got China that a few weeks ago made a much harsher ban on crypto, Bitcoin, really cracking down as China often does. Then on the other side, you've got El Salvador that took a win, which is awesome. But it basically is a bait and switch. It's a look here while I do something over here. It's the oldest magic trick in the book. El Salvador could use a win, good for them. It's gonna be short lived. Now, let's break this down. You really wanna stay for this video because I'm gonna break down stuff that a lot of these people who are trying to hype up Bitcoin, which the price really isn't going anywhere. It's kind of going like this, but it's not really going anywhere. They're missing, okay? And, and, and here's the thing. The first thing is you've gotta understand what happened and what hyped up Bitcoin. Just over a year ago, you could buy Bitcoin for like four to five grand, four to five grand. Then it got up to like 50, 60 grand. And then when the pandemic officially ended, when all the states started opening up and when the mask mandate ended, that day, Bitcoin fell by almost 40%. And everyone was talking about the bubble, even the founder of Ethereum was talking about the bubble, breaking down how crypto was in a bubble and he thought it was gonna crash even more. Well, it did. And the reality is we've, we've seen it crash, we've seen it go up. Now, of course, the crypto enthusiasts who have very little knowledge, they're just trying to sell you a course will always tell you, oh, it's on sale. Now's a great time to buy because it's on sale. See, they've always got the sales pitch. Every time the crypto drops because it's in a massive bubble, the last time it went on sale, it took three and a half years to come back up. And a lot of people lost billions of dollars in Bitcoin and other crypto because it was on sale. And so now these same gurus are coming out saying the same tired Oh, it's on sale. Don't worry. It's going to bounce up to a hundred thousand, a hundred million. The problem with Bitcoin, a lot of stuff came out in, in Washington today, talking about stricter, uh, stricter oversight and stricter laws on Bitcoin, which is something I've been talking about for over two months now that this bill is going to get passed. So there's a few bills in Washington that are looking at getting passed where they're going to squeak in laws that affect cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, similar to what they did to the, the CTA, the Corporate Transparency Act. That wasn't a bill, a standalone bill, that was passed as a package in a whole bunch of other bills. And this is how Washington always does it. Now there's a fundamental problem with this. And the problem is it allows them to get basically whatever they want, right? They can, they can pass some little standalone bill and then, uh, or something that people want that they can agree on. And it's gonna have a few other things in the package. That's how Washington does it. Every bill legally should have to be, one bill should be voted on individually. Well, unfortunately, our government is about as corrupt as corrupt gets, and they do not do that. They package things together, which should be illegal, but it never will be. It never will be because they won't allow it to be, and they have the power. Congress has the power, so they'd have to vote themselves out of power. No people are gonna vote themselves out of power, and the American people have proven that they're incredibly weak as they went along with this, you know, global whatever. So nothing's gonna happen. Let's just put that right now. Nothing's gonna happen. The American people are gonna do what they always do, which is nothing. I mean, the, 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 our ancestors would have done something by now. The Americans now are so weak, they're not gonna do anything. So what can you do? Is crypto bad? Should you get out of crypto? No, but you should really start looking at the crypto you're getting. There's two parts to this. One is I've talked a lot about pirate chain, a lot about Monero, a lot about privacy coins. And the reason you should pretty much only use privacy coins if you want to keep your crypto long term, because the government eventually is going to put stiffer and stiffer regulations and make crypto not worth it. And they're also going to tax it at a rate that makes it really difficult 
to make money on it. And when they do that, the bubble's going to pop. The, the bubble hasn't popped. It's just deflating. It's deflating in front of our eyes. It has not came back up since the global crisis has officially ended. And it's not going to anytime soon because that excess money has all dried up. It's all gone. And so now people are having to get back to their normal life. And so we're going to see a, a pre-2020 market, which is going to be about a quarter of what it is now. So you're going to see the air continue to let out. There's been a lot of big hedge funds and a lot of big companies that have already pivoted away from, from Bitcoin and said they're not coming back. They have no reason to come back. Even Elon Musk has flip-flopped and talked about pivoting. And I guarantee if Elon Musk goes on a Bitcoin sucks rant, which is probably coming, then Bitcoin will go from, you know, mid thirties to mid teens overnight. Because the fact is Bitcoin is not a real currency and it's not a real store of wealth. It is a hype train. That's all it's ever been. It has no real value. It's the oldest outdated cryptocurrency there is. It'd be like me selling you on a Model T. Hey, you want a Model T? Yeah, if this was the early 1900s, the Model Ts were incredible. But to buy one right now in the 2020s would be ridiculous. No air conditioning, no power brakes, no power steering, no value, right? No value as a daily driver, maybe a car collector, no value. It's so old, antiquated, and outdated. Bitcoin is the Model T of cryptocurrency, but people are hyping it up like it's something great. There are a lot of other cryptocurrencies that solve problems that add value. Bitcoin is not one of them. Bitcoin has always been a hype beast. That's all it's been. It's like Supreme. That t-shirt is not worth $400, but because it has a little logo on it and people want it, they covet it, it goes up. That brick with Supreme logo, those pancakes or that hammer or that any, when I was, when I was a kid, Supreme was an average to mediocre skateboard brand that most people didn't even like. Then it became a hype beast due to popularity. That's what happened to Bitcoin. And a lot of you are going to be left holding the bag if you think Bitcoin has any long-term value. The next thing is what has been happening with hackers and ransomware. And that has proved what I've been saying and what every other privacy advocate has been saying for a couple years now that Bitcoin is not a privacy coin. Bitcoin is not secure. They were able to backtrack a lot of this. They were able to catch a lot of hackers. They were able to pull back a lot of Bitcoin. It's supposed to be anonymous and on blockchain and Silk Road and you can't catch me and catch me if you can't. No, dude, super simple. FBI pulled their card and they pulled a lot of cards that we don't even know about. And there's been rumblings and talk in the community of how open Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is one of the easiest things to track that there is. Anybody can track Bitcoin. It's not closed source. It's not private. It's not secure. It's, it's just in your face. And it also doesn't have the protection that a lot of, that a lot of other financial assets and financial instruments have. So Bitcoin just kind of leaves you hanging out there. And the problem with that for most of you is then you're kind of just stuck, right? You're stuck in a scenario where you've got this coin and it's just worthless. It doesn't add any value, it doesn't do anything. It's just kind of a, a hyped up thing and if the hype runs out, you lose all your money. It's kind of like what happened to millions of people in 2017. The hype ran out, the money ran out, and the coin went from like 20,000 down to just a couple thousand bucks. Well, all those people who bought a high had to hold on for years or sell at nickels on the dollar because of the hype ran out. And it's the same thing that's happening right now. It's the same thing that's going to continue to happen until Bitcoin just kind of withers up. It's not a diss on Bitcoin. A lot of people get offended. Like, no, Bitcoin's great. That's not great. You want it to be great. I understand. I wish it was great. I wish half of what people say about Bitcoin is true. I would invest every penny I've ever had into Bitcoin. But the problem is it's not true. So with them being able to retract and being able to catch these hackers easily because they're so dumb that they use Bitcoin as ransom, which is one of the easiest things to, they would have been better off using a Swiss wire train. Like you would have been better off telling them to deposit it at your local bank of America. Like this is ludicrous that people still think this. They've watched one too many Hollywood movies. Bitcoin is the most regulated and tracked form of, of, I don't know what you want to call it. It's not a currency store of wealth. That's pushing it. There's no store of wealth that goes like this at all times. It's just this weird market that the government has been cracking down on. Now, because all these ransoms, the pipeline, uh, even uh, you know, JBS Meats just paid like $11 million for, like we've just seen this massive 
hacktivist movement, this super, and this is just a couple of them. I've seen dozens and dozens of big hacks and big ransoms pop up over the last month, like tons, more than ever. It's off the charts. And not all of them, but a lot of them are asking for Bitcoin or they're trying to do these anonymous, you know, Dread Pirate Roberts type moves. They just, they all end up in jail because they're not even remotely secure. They're not even remotely private. And I think a lot of people are feeling the squeeze and they're feeling the pain of what's been happening the last year, year and a half in the world. And now with all the government stuff drying up, there's going to be a lot of desperation, a lot of desperate people. The government funding, all the government stuff is officially pretty much ended. And even the moratoriums and everything end at the end of this month. So you're going to see millions of people get evicted from their homes who haven't been paying a lot of bills for the last year. And so it's really kind of coming to a head. And the government is, is putting less faith in crypto. And they're talking, I mean, just today, they came out with a whole bunch of new proposed regulations. And it's coming from both sides. It's coming from Democrats and Republicans. There's no, like, save your party. There's no, both sides at some level want way more regulation and they will get it like they get everything they want because that's how the federal government works and it's going to be slid into a package so is crypto going anywhere no i think crypto is going to be around is the united states going to keep working on regulating it and controlling it more yeah they are could they eventually do a prohibition style uh making crypto illegal yeah and a lot of people have said that there's a good chance they'll do something like that i've talked about different ways they could do stuff like that as well the tax revenue is irrelevant because America has, you know, based on the GDP, they're going to get their taxes regardless. People will just shift from this asset to another asset. It really does not matter in the grand scheme of things to the United States. Crypto didn't exist a couple years ago. They were just fine. And if crypto disappears in a couple years, it won't, it'll be a, a distant memory. That's not relevant. A lot of people think it is. What's controlling this is big companies, and they'll just pivot their funds from one asset class to another asset class, the same that they've done throughout entire history of the American economy. That means that a lot of people think, well, there's too much money in Bitcoin. Yeah, it got cut in half in a couple of days. There's not too much money in Bitcoin. They can pull it out like that. Bitcoin could go to $2,000 tomorrow. Do I think it will? No, but is it gonna keep going down? It's gonna keep going like this right now until we get more clarity, right? The last big hit, although there are a couple of big companies talking about pulling out billions more. And if that happens, it's gonna go down to you know low 20s, high teens. But if you keep looking at the way that it's going, yeah, Bitcoin's going to have serious problems. Could it go back up a little? Of course, but it's not going to be the way that it was because it can't because it keeps getting squeezed and it's no longer a safe bet. During the pandemic, it was a safe bet because people were funneling money they didn't even have. People were funneling stimulus checks and all kinds of stuff in there. And plus, with stimulus checks, they had extra capital to invest. That's all dried up now. So that's why Bitcoin and crypto markets are starting to dry up, starting to get the squeeze, and they're starting to feel the air let out. And as the air lets out, more and more people are starting to get out now because they don't want to be sitting here for four years praying that it goes back up. Is Bitcoin a privacy coin? No. Is Bitcoin going to continue to have problems? Yes. Are these hackers causing a lot of trouble in America? Yes. Are they staged hackers by the American government like a lot of people are saying? I don't know. I don't think the government really needs that. I will say, you notice whenever they want to talk about gun rights, all of a sudden there's a bunch of shootings. You notice whenever they want to talk about regulating crypto, all of a sudden there's a bunch of bad press about crypto. You know, America has mastered the art of shining the spotlight wherever they need it. So, you know, take that for what it is. But it is kind of curious that whenever Congress is looking at a big bill that's controversial, all of a sudden the news is full of insert whatever they need to get this thing passed anyway let me know what you think down below really appreciate you guys checking out this video go all in and everything you do in your life like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video